In this video, we're going to compute the derivative of a polynomial function f of x equals 2x cubed plus 4x. We're going to do this from the definition of the derivative. That is, we're going to compute it, uh, the derivative as a limit of a difference quotient. And then once we've computed the derivative of f, we'll use it to calculate f prime of 2, f prime of negative 1. In fact, we could use it to compute any uh, slope of a tangent line to this cubic polynomial. So let's start with the function itself. What does the derivative mean after all the definition? We see that f prime of x by definition is the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. And so we need to simplify the difference quotient because if we were just to plug in uh, h equals 0 in here, you're going to look in the numerator, you're going to get an f of x minus an f of x, which is a 0. And then since h is 0, you're going to get 0. You always see this with derivatives. If you just try to plug in h equals 0, you're going to get the indeterminate form 0 over 0. So we have to work to simplify this expression first. And so taking piece by piece, the, let's first make sure we understand what f of x plus h means right here. So it can be useful to remember the function. When you see like this f of x notation, sometimes I prefer to think of it as x of f of blank right here, where the, the, the x is just meant to be a symbol to be put in later, right? It's just a placeholder. So when you see f of x, think of f of blank, right? So you get 2 times blank cubed plus 4 times blank. There's a blank that's left for something else to be plugged in. So we could plug in x plus h, like so. That's what we could do to fill in the blank. Uh, we could just fill it in with an x, right? f of x, that's all that that means. And so we fill in the blank based upon what we need to put in there. So our first goal is to kind of put in the x plus h into the blank right there. And so our limit would look like, as h goes to zero, f of x plus h, we're gonna get two times x plus h cubed plus four times x plus h. Then we need to subtract from it f of x, which that's just gonna be the two x cubed uh, plus four x, sorry for squishing it there. And this all sits above the h right there. So we need to simplify, multiply out uh, the numerator. And so the hardest part here is gonna come from multiplying out the x plus h cubed. Uh, again, that's the most complicated thing right here. And so what we're gonna get is we're gonna get two times well, if you take x plus h cubed, that's going to multiply out to be x cubed plus 3xh, well, sorry, 3x squared h plus 3xh squared plus h cubed, right? Keep on going. You're going to distribute the 4. You get a 4x plus a 4h. And then subtract from that the 2x cubed plus 4x. Again, this all sits above an h. Now, you might be wondering, how in the world did you multiply out x plus h cubed so quickly? Well, it turns out in calculations like this, especially for these difference quotients, where you have to plug in x plus h, the so-called binomial theorem is a super duper awesome uh, tool you can use right here to simplify when these expansions of things of the form uh, x plus h to the nth power. So if you take x plus h to the nth power, what that means is x plus h times x plus h uh, times x plus h all the way up to, you know, x plus h. We have these, we have n of them all together, right? And so when you look at all the possible combinations, you have an x times an x times an x times x. You have an x times an h times an x times an x times an h. You, you have all the combinations. What you're going to do is you're going to look on all the possible ways that you can combine x and h, in this case to be 3. That's the n right here. So how many ways can you combine this, the letters x and h to get a 3? Well, you could take three x's, so x times x times x, that's an x cubed. You could take two x's and one h. You could take one x and two h's, or you could take three h's right there. So you have uh, you have those possibilities. Notice the power of x is descending, right? So you went from three to one. You didn't write anything there, but that's the first power. And then the last one, you, have, you don't see an x because that's the zeroth power. So you see the powers of x start at three and go all the way down to zero. In converse, the powers of h start at 0 and ascend up to 3. So if one's going down, one's going up. The total sum of the powers is always equal to 3 in this situation. So that's kind of predictable, but what are the coefficients? 1, 3, 3, 1. How did I know that? This is where I think the funnest part of the binomial theorem comes from. It comes from the so-called Pascal's triangle. Pascal's triangle, which is a recursive triangle, very useful in computing these things. So what you do is you start off with a 1, then you draw a 1 and a 1, and every line you're going to start and end with a 1. And then the subsequent numbers in the sequence, 
are created by taking the two numbers above it and adding it together. So one plus two is three. Two plus one is three, right? So the next line, you get one, four, six, four, one. You get one, five, 10, 10, five, one. Where do these numbers come from? One plus four is five. Four plus six is 10. Four plus six is 10. It, it, it's a palindrome. Each line's a palindrome like so. And so then the coefficients in the binomial expansion will be the coefficients in the associated row right there. So the coefficients are going to be 1, 3, 3, 1. So if I wanted to do, for example, x plus h to the fifth, then this would look like x to the fifth plus 5x to the fourth h plus 10x cubed h squared plus 10x squared h cubed plus 5x h to the fourth plus 1h to the fifth. Because I'm just going to take the coefficients on the bottom of Pascal's triangle right there. Pretty neat trick. It comes in useful as you're going to be trying to um, compute these limits of difference quotients. That is, if you have to calculate the derivative of a polynomial, this binomial theorem, super, super helpful. Use Pascal's triangle to help you out here. So the next thing to do is distribute the two onto all of these pieces. Make sure I got them all there. Uh, copying down the limit. It's important to make sure you write down the limit here because this is a limit calculation here. We're going to get 2x cubed plus 6x squared h plus 6xh squared plus 2h cubed. We get a 4x and we get a 4h and then we get a negative 2x cubed minus a 4x all over h right here. Now, the nice thing when it comes to these difference quotients, if you take all the terms that came from the f of x, they're going to subtract from something that came from the f of x plus h part. Um, and so you'll notice that there's a 2x cubed, which cancels with the negative 2x cubed. There's going to be a 4x, which cancels with the negative x. So everyone in the f of x faction canceled with something in the f of x plus h faction. So now let's write down who survived that massacre, because uh, we had the x is all just gambit right there. We get 6x squared h plus 6x, 6x h squared plus 2h cubed plus a 4h all over h. You'll now notice that everything in the numerator that didn't cancel out is actually divisible by h. We could factor out the h. I mean, look at it here. You have a factor of h, two factors of h, three factors of h, a factor of h right there. We can factor out the h, leaving behind a 6x squared plus a 6x plus a 2, sorry, a 6xh. We get, I'm going to write this on the next line so it doesn't get too crowded. We'll put it down here. So we get the limit as h goes to 0. Factor out the h. So that left behind the 6x squared because we took away the h. Then we're going to get a 6xh. We took away one of the h's. Then you get a 2h squared. Again, we took away one of the h's. And you're left with a plus 4. This all sits above the h. Now the common factor of h in the numerator cancels with the h in the denominator, for which then this limit we see is going to be the limit as h goes to 0. We're going to get 6x squared plus 6xh plus 2h squared plus 4. Now, because we're no longer divided by Eight, uh, we're no longer divided by h. There's no concern if h goes to 0. If we were just to substitute in h equals 0, we end up with a 6x squared because that doesn't depend on h whatsoever. We're going to get a 6x times 0. We're going to get a 2 times 0 squared. And we get a plus 4, which will simplify just to be 6x squared plus 4. And so this right here is the derivative of our original function, recall, y equals 2x cubed plus 4x. So now that we've computed the derivative, we're now in a position where we can evaluate the derivative to find specific tangent lines if we wanted to. So we were chored with doing f prime at 2. So this will just be function evaluation at this point. We get 6 times 2 squared plus 4. 2 squared, of course, is 4 times 6 is equal to 24. Plus another 4, you end up with 28. So the slope of the tangent line when x equals 2 would be 28. Uh, on the other hand, we are supposed to also do f prime at negative 1, which this will look like 6 times negative 1 squared plus 4. Negative 1 squared is going to give you a positive 1 times it by 6 will give you a 6 plus a 4. Then we see that the slope of the tangent line here would be 10. So once you get the derivative calculated, 
finding specific instantaneous rates of change or specific tangent slopes is easy peasy stuff. Uh, it's really the simplification of the difference quotient, which is purely just a pre-calculus skill there uh, that really makes, that, that's the hardest part when it comes to computing derivatives, like we saw in this case with finding the derivative of a polynomial.